SpaceX has been focusing on getting ready to launch Starship at their Boca Chica facility in Texas, but launching Starship from Cape Canaveral in Florida has always been part of the plan. The details of those plans seem to have gotten a bit more firm recently, and that makes it a good time to talk about this topic. Here's a map of the current users of launch sites at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station and Kennedy Space Center, and it's pretty clear they are busy, busy, busy. If you want more detailed information, I recently did a video on the history of launches at the Cape and who is launching there now. The question for SpaceX is, where can we fit Starship into the limited amount of real estate? There are really two questions here. What is the quickest way to get Starship flying here? And what is the best long-term way to fly Starship here? To launch quickly, it probably needs to be a site that SpaceX controls. SpaceX has three sites. Launch Complex 39A, where they launch Falcon 9, Crew Dragon, and Falcon Heavy. Space Launch Complex 40, where they launch Falcon 9. And Space Launch Complex 13, which they use for landing Falcon 9 boosters on some missions. The landing zone doesn't really help, so the candidates are Space Launch Complex 40 or Complex 39A. How about Space Launch Complex 40? You can call it Slick 40 if you want to sound cool. Changes here wouldn't affect Falcon Heavy or Crew Dragon launches. Unfortunately, it's close to other users. To the north, we have Slick 41, which ULA uses to launch sensitive DoD payloads as part of National Security Space Launch, and also Starliner astronauts to the ISS. This makes it a very valuable launch site, and unfortunately, their launch integration building is quite a bit to the south of the launch pad, placing it only 1,700 meters from Slick 40. To the southwest, there is an electrical substation at 1180 meters. And finally, the very popular astronaut beach house is 1450 meters to the northeast. More problematic, the pad is fairly small, only 330 meters across. That means all of the pad facilities are close to the launch pad. Everything on the pad is designed for medium rockets, and it doesn't have facilities for cryogenic fuels like liquid methane. Launch Complex 39A is a better choice. The distances to other users are quite a bit farther, and the pad is much bigger at 850 meters. The pad infrastructure was designed for Nova-class rockets, bigger than the Saturn V, which describes Starship pretty well. The Saturn V and Shuttle both used liquid hydrogen, so there are existing systems that can be adapted to provide liquid methane for Starship. The big downside of 39A is that it is currently the only launch site for Crew Dragon and Falcon Heavy, and if there were any issues with Starship, they could affect those Falcon 9 flights. And in fact, this has shown up as a NASA concern in a few news stories. It's not clear how big of a concern this really is. NASA was initially concerned about SpaceX's approach to fueling the Falcon 9 with the astronauts already in Crew Dragon, and that ended up not being a long-term concern, and this might be the same sort of thing. I do think there's a bit of a double standard going on here. Starliner will be launching from Slick 41 on top of an Atlas rocket, and ULA is planning on launching their brand new Vulcan rocket from the same pad. A failure in Vulcan could impact Starliner launches the same way a failure in Starship could affect Crew Dragon launches. There is a mitigation. SpaceX could build a crew access tower at Slick 40 and move Crew Dragon there, but that would clearly take some time. Another factor in Pad 39A's favor is that SpaceX already has an environmental assessment done to launch Starship and Super Heavy from Launch Complex 39A. The plan is to build a launch tower like the one at Boca Chica in the indicated location. And in fact, as of June 2022, SpaceX has a number of launch tower sections constructed and has started assembling them at Pad 39A. The curved structure on the right is probably a flame diverter. If you look closely, you can see two humans fitting a cross beam in place. Initially, Starship and Super Heavy will be shipped from Boca Chica to Florida. I discuss how that might happen at length in the linked video. In the longer term, SpaceX has two needs. They need a place to build Starship in Florida so they don't have to ship it. And they need an additional launch site for Starship as one site isn't going to be enough. In 2018, SpaceX leased a plot of land near the Kennedy Space Center Visitor's Center, known as the Roberts Road Site. Here's the site on a map. 
Is this big enough for a Starship factory? I did a quick estimate of the area that Starship is using at Boca Chica, and it came out to be about 2.8 million square feet, or 263,000 square meters. Interestingly, the Roberts Road site is pretty much exactly the same size, about 2.8 million square feet. It's not clear exactly how SpaceX plans on using the whole site, but there's some initial site plans to deal with water management that can be referenced to make some guesses. The hangar on the right, since completed, was started as a building to do Falcon 9 refurbishment, and it is probably devoted to that operation rather than Starship. This space here is currently being used to construct the tower sections for the Pad 39A launch tower. You can see the concrete bases for the legs of the tower. The space on the far left is being used for surface water management. The elevation of Kennedy Space Center is only about 7 feet above sea level, and these big ponds to manage surface water are very common. Near the water is a large factory building, roughly as big as the Four Tents at Boca Chica. Next to it is a possible extension to the factory building. And then finally, two buildings that appear to be high bays. They look to be the same size as the mega high bay that SpaceX is building at Boca Chica. For a little sense of scale, I put a Falcon 9 with Dragon in the lagoon. This is a big site. The site is about 5.7 miles to Pad 39A. That's more than double the distance from the Boca Chica factory to the launch site there, but less than half the distance from Blue Origins factory to Launch Complex 36. That covers the factory side. What about an additional launch site? In the early days of Apollo, it wasn't clear how big a rocket would be required or how many launches it would take, so NASA planned ahead. Not only did they plan for the two launch pads that we are familiar with, 39A and 39B, they also planned for three additional launch sites. There was 39C and 39D to the north and west, just north of a road, and then there was 39E northwest of 39C, off the top of the map here. When NASA settled on the Saturn V and Lunar Orbit Rendezvous, they determined that two launch sites were plenty. In the past 20 years, NASA has realized that things have gotten pretty busy in the area and have come up with a notional new launch complex. As in, I don't have a plan for a new launch complex, but I do have a notion where we might put one. They took the space allocated for 39C and 39D, combined it, and moved it to the south side of the road, and named it Launch Complex 49. Here's a view from the north looking at this site. This would be absolutely perfect for Starship. It's a dedicated piece of land that they can fully control as it doesn't have any other users, and the closest active site is 39B which is only used by SLS, and SLS will not fly often. It's about 50% farther from the Roberts Road site than 39A, but that's still not very far. The downside is that this is land that has not previously been used for launches and will require environmental review and significant preparation. SpaceX has actively expressed interest in this site, and NASA started the environmental review process in late 2021. If you transplanted the Boca Chica Starship launch site to LC-49, here's what you would get. Plenty of room for multiple towers if SpaceX is willing to accept close separation, and given their choices on LC-39A, that appears to be true. That was originally where I stopped, but I thought about this a little bit more, and I came up with another possible option that might happen. Back in Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, ULA launches Delta IV Heavy rockets out of LC-37, but there are only three remaining Delta IV Heavy launches remaining, one in 2022, one in 2023, and one in 2024. After that, it's done flying. Would ULA give up their lease to SpaceX? They might want to keep it for future use, but one of the focuses of Tori Bruno as CEO of ULA is to reduce the duplication of facilities. They have shut down the Delta IV factory to save money, and it makes little sense to continue to pay for a launch complex you aren't using. That assumes that the cost of keeping it around is meaningful, or there's a requirement to use it if you want to keep it. How would this site work for Starship? The pad was built for Saturn 1 and 1B, which were considerably smaller than Saturn 5, and therefore smaller than Starship. But LC-37 was planned to have two launch towers, so the actual pad area is pretty big, about 600 meters in size. 
It currently has liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen infrastructure, which is easily adapted to liquid methane and LOX. It has good separation. The closest pad is Launch Complex 34, but that has been abandoned for years and is the location of the Apollo 1 memorial, which would be far down on the list of sites to redevelop. To the south, there's LC-20, which is currently leased by Relativity, but it's 2,200 meters away. To the north, the situation is even better. The nearest launch pad is 3,600 meters away, and that launch pad is Slick 40, which SpaceX already leases. Here's an image of the Starship launch complex at Boca Chica. It's about 300 meters by 200 meters. And here's what it looks like on top of Space Launch Complex 37. It fits very easily. In fact, you could build a whole series of pads along this section of land if you could get environmental approval to do so. We can call it Starship Row. Here's a quick summary. The initial launch location of Starship will be pad 39A. There will be a Starship factory. Launch Complex 49 is probably the next site to come online. Space Launch Complex 37 is an intriguing possibility if ULA will part with it. If you enjoyed this video, please answer this question. If a SpaceX could Starship the Cape, how much Starship could a SpaceX space?